ABCs of Kazakhstan, written and illustrated by James Neely. H. H is for history, ancient history on page 2, Kazakhstan's history on page 3, notable figure on page 4. Ancient history. This story begins a long time ago, over 1,000 years ago to be more exact in ancient times. This was long before you and I were even born. The land that is now Kazakhstan was once ruled by the Saka dynasty. Back then, there was constant fighting and lots of battles, even worse than the kind you have with your siblings. Many years later, in 1218, Genghis Khan and his unstable golden horde of Mongols invaded and took over. The Mongol Empire was not well organized, and once their leader died, it quickly fell apart. After the Mongol Empire fell apart, towns decided to just rule themselves. That is, until 1511, when the Kazakhs showed up. They were led by Qasim Khan. Qasim Khan brought bunches of towns together as one, but sadly, once he died, they split up into three groups. The three groups all spoke the same language and came from the same families, but they, could, but they just could not find a way to share nicely with each other. A wonder of the area at the time was the Silk Road. Sadly, it wasn't actually a road made of soft and beautiful silk, but instead it was a route for bringing silk from China into Europe. K is for Kazakhstan. G is for Genghis Khan. K is also for Qasim Khan. And S is for Silk Road. Kazakhstan's History Ever since the Kazakhs showed up in the 1500s, the area remained pretty stable. However, in the 1700s, as all empires do, they fell apart. And now that Kazakh government wasn't united, Russia began to take interest in all of the Kazakh land. Another group called the Kalmyks threatened the Kazakhs, and Russia stepped in and offered to help protect the Kazakhs. The Kazakhs accepted Russia's offer and became closer and closer with Russia. Fast forward 100 years, Russia and Great Britain were competing over land and power. In an attempt to beat Great Britain, Russia solidified its control over the Kazakh territory. Fast forward another 100 years to 1916, the Kazakhs rebelled against the Russian government in Kazakhstan. Russia did not like this. So they sent in troops, some troops, and forcefully stopped the rebellion. During the Russian Revolution, Kazakhstan governed itself for two years. Unfortunately for the people of Kazakhstan, the communists won and took over the Kazakh government. In 1936, Kazakhstan became a Soviet Socialist Republic, basically meaning that they were part of the USSR, the new Russia. The USSR controlled Kazakhstan for over 60 years. During that time, the people of Kazakhstan were not treated well or fairly. Although they hadn't been treated well, it was better than it was before the Soviets took control. Later, in 1991, when the USSR fell apart, Kazakhstan became a country and voted as its first president, Nursultan Nazarbayev. He put his opponents in prison and was re-elected four times mostly because the elections were not fair. U is for USSR. N is for Nursultan Nazarbayev. Notable figure. A notable figure from Kazakhstan is Timur Bekmambetov. He was born June 25, 1961. In 1978, when he was just 17 years old, he traveled to Moscow to learn from the Moscow Energy Institute. He studied there for only two years before deciding that, in, that he wanted to go to the Tashkent Theatrical Art Institute. In 1987, he graduated as an artist of theater and film. After graduating, he served in the Red Army until 1988 in an artillery division. In 1989, he started to direct commercials. He did this for a while, and in 1997, he won Best Young Director from the Russian Film Academy. 
1999, Timur started his own company, and in 2004, he made his first movie named Night Watch. It is a scary vampire movie that you should not watch until you're much older. A sequel came out in 2006 called Day Watch, and in 2009, there was Twilight Watch. T is for Timur Bekmambetov. L is for Land. Location, page 6. Climate, page 7. Physical features, page 8. Location. Modern-day Kazakhstan is a completely landlocked country in Central Asia. It is actually around four times the size of Texas, at just over 1 million square miles. To the north, or above Kazakhstan, is Russia, and to the right, or the east, is China. Southeast of Kazakhstan is Kyrgyzstan. To the south, or down, is Uzbekistan. And finally, to the southwest, down and to the left, is Turkmenistan. C is for Compass Rose. M is for Map of Kazakhstan. Climate. What is climate? Climate is the temperature and general conditions of the area over the last 10 or 20 years. In Kazakhstan, the climate is very dry. Kazakhstan has some very different temperatures depending on where you are. In the north of Kazakhstan, the temperatures can get really, really cold, as low as negative 58 degrees Fahrenheit. The capital of Kazakhstan, Astana, has the record for coldest temperature recorded in a capital city. Compared to those freezing temperatures, the south is much warmer and more livable. However, in some areas the temperature can get very hot, up to 104 degrees. A is for average weekly temperature. Physical features. The physical landscape in Kazakhstan varies greatly. In the south and east of the country, there are mountain ranges. In the north, there are large forests and hills. In the southwest and west of the country, there are deserts and semi-arid regions. In the center of the country, there are vast steppes, large areas of flat grasslands, which are known as the first location that man ever tamed horses. Some of the physical features are the Tian Shan mountain range, as well as the Ural Irtush and Sri Darya rivers. There are also the Balkash and Zaysan lakes in the south. There is also the Aral Sea, which was drying up from overuse from Soviet era farming. But thanks to conservation efforts, it is growing again and filling back up to what it used to be. An important resource for Kazakhstan is the Caspian Sea to the west. It contains lots of underground oil, which is very useful for the country. T is for Tian Shan Mountain Range. R is for the rusted ships stranded on the dried up seabed of the Aral Sea. R is for religion. Judaism, page 10. Christianity, page 11. Islam, page 12. Judaism. Although Judaism has been around in Kazakhstan for a long time, there are not many Jewish people living there. The exact number is unknown, but estimates of how many people follow in Judaism is between three and 20,000. Most of the Jewish population consider themselves Russian, and many also speak Russian. Jewish society is very well organized. There are lots of organizations helping the less fortunate. In the past, when the Soviets ruled, Jews were being mistreated. One sad law was that for every 1,000 Jews, four boys had to join the military per year, and the Russian government did not care if they were as young as 12 years old. Luckily these days, Jews are not being mistreated as badly, and the government doesn't actively harm the community. However, some people living in Kazakhstan are against the Jews and try to hurt them. T is for the Torah. Christianity Christianity is a lot more popular than Judaism in Kazakhstan, with about 26% of the population being Christian. Most of these Christians are Russian Orthodox. Kazakhstan actually has the highest concentration of Christians in all of Central Asia. Christianity was first preached in the area around the 7th century. 
However, Russian Orthodox wasn't preached until the 17th century. Similar to the Jews, Christians were mistreated by the Soviets. The Soviet government was atheist, meaning that they did not believe in God or any religion. The Soviets would take church property, they would take control of schools, and they would kill missionaries and priests. Once the Soviet Union collapsed, Christians stopped being mistreated and their life improved, similar to the Jews. However, in the last few years, it was made illegal to pray at work or in school, which is a step in the wrong direction. B is for the Bible. Islam. Islam was the first major religion from the Middle East to arrive in Kazakhstan, and has been in practice for over a thousand years. Islam has left a major mark on the culture and lifestyle of the region. Around 65% of the population is Muslim, with most of them being Sunni. The first codes of law, or the first rules in Kazakhstan, were written almost as a copy of the Islamic Sharia law. The alphabet in Kazakhstan was based on Arabic until 1912. Just like Christians and Jews, Muslims were treated badly by the Soviet Union. If a Muslim was caught praying in public, they would be put in jail. I guess it is safe to say that the Soviet leaders were not good people. Q is for the Quran. C. C is for culture. Population changes, page 14. Language and literature, page 15. Arts, page 16. Population changes. Currently in Kazakhstan, there are around 19.5 million people. In the year 2000, 15.2 million people lived there. And in 1950, there were only 6.7 million people. The country's population is estimated to continue growing by about 1.2% this year. On average, women have more than two children. Every day, the population increases by about 500. P is for population density. P is also for population. Language and literature. The official language of Kazakhstan is Kazakh, or Kazakh, uh, and has been since 1989. However, on the street and in the country, Russian is much more common. Over time, Kazakh has been written in Arabic, Cyrillic, and most re recently in Latin. In 2017, the government changed the language from being based on Cyrillic to Latin. Radio stations there broadcast in both Russian and Kazakh, and actually most government forums are in Russian and Kazakh. Most people in Kazakhstan know English, however, it is not commonly used. To say please in Kazakh, you say marhabat. To say yes, it is ya. To say no, it is zok. The first ten numbers are bur, iki, ush, tort, bes, alti, jeti, segez, Togiz and on. A is for the alphabet. Arts. Kazakhs in general are proud that their culture survived the oppression of the Soviets, especially their music and poetry. Sometimes when people are arguing, they sing their arguments over the music of a dombla. This is called an aedi. Most children know how to play at least one musical instrument by a young age. Larger cities in Kazakhstan have movie theaters, and some even have quote-unquote palaces of culture, where concerts are performed or where dances are hosted. A popular pastime in Kazakhstan is embroidery. P is for a Kazakh painting. P is for another Kazakh painting. L. L is for lifestyle. Living standards, page 18. Family life and education, page 19. Change in women's roles, page 20. Living standards. In Kazakhstan, the GDP per capita is around $10,000. The life expectancy for men is 69, and for women it is 77. The average school enrollment, meaning how many people go to school, is right around 100%. The Human Development Index, or HDI, rank for Kazakhstan is 50 out of 189. For the Gender Inequality Index, or GDI, it is 46 out of 162. 
The HDI and GDI are systems that rate a country based on how developed they are and if women are equal with men. Everyone in the country can read and write. The standards of living vary greatly depending on which oblast or state you live in. The country is trying to lower the inequality in the country. More than half of the population live in urban centers. L is for living standards. Family life and education. The family life in Kazakhstan is pretty similar to life in the U.S., with the father being the primary money maker. On average, there are two kids per family, and the mother normally stays home and looks after the kids and the house. Women are allowed to work, and some do. Much importance is placed on family and extended family, with many households being over three generations. For education, most kids attend the local school and the closest university. However, some do travel abroad for college. School is free for kids between the ages of 5 and 17, and it is six days a week. In most schools, all the different classes are in the same building. After ninth grade, school is no longer mandatory. The average length of schooling is about 12 years. F is for family. U is for Nazarbayev University. Change in women's roles. In the early days of Kazakhstan, women took care of the children, family, and the home, while the men would protect the house and also work. Once the Soviets took over in the 1930s and 40s, women were actually encouraged to go and work in the factories, in addition to their traditional responsibilities. The Soviet environment was very different than their previous world, and it took many people a long time to adjust. In the last decade or two, women have been encouraged to go back to their traditional roles of staying at home and taking care of the family. The good thing is that they are not being forced to do this, as the government do does allow women to work and have jobs. W is for women's participation in society. James R. Neely was born on December 31st, 2008 in Charlotte, North Carolina. At the age of five, he decided he wanted to be president of the United States of America. This is a dream that continues to hold true to this day. He has always been interested in both history and geography. He loved learning geography with his dad. He lived on Lake Wiley for the first 11 years of his life. So, being on a peninsula, he was taught how to swim as a baby, just in case he ever fell into the water. He took lessons for a while, and when he was seven, he joined the River Hill Sharks summer swim team. He got a taste for winning and pursued competitive swimming. In 2020, while the world was getting sick, his grandmother was diagnosed with metastatic cancer and died seven short months later. This was heartbreaking to him. Around a month after her death, his family moved to a neighborhood and fell in love with their new home. Recently, he has taken up water polo and pickleball, which are both really fun. In the summer of 2022, he volunteered to be an assistant coach for his neighborhood swim team, the Bridgemill Bluefins. And in the fall of the same year, he swam for the Indian Land High School varsity swim team, where he made it all the way to states as an eighth grader. As he is writing this children's book, he really hopes that he gets a good grade. C is for citations. 